The way we consume and share news today is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why we decided it's important to look at what's being discussed online. Like a brand new venue, how else would you know about it without social media? We're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Hi, good morning. This is how I get my news, I must say. <laughs> at wee hours in the night, I yeah. mean, it's not my only source. It shouldn't be everyone's only source, but it's certainly easy to look at what's yep. trending, right. right? Yes. New restaurants, new K-pop concert venues. Years, I guess it's only appropriate. Yep. Given the prowess. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the good news for all the K pop fans out there, and I don't think this is going to be limited just to K pop. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, good for the, the co- concert industry in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, Uh, So fans will soon be able to enjoy, I guess, more quality performances uh, at these new concert-specific venues that are going to be built right here in uh, Seoul, the Seoul metropolitan area. Mm. And three large venues are slated to open over the next three years until 2025, uh, starting with the Inspire Arena uh, in Incheon. Now, the, uh, the arena can hold up to 15,000 audience members. Like when I said Seoul metropolitan area, this is the metropolitan area. Incheon <laughs> is not Seoul, obviously, but um, not that far from Seoul. The greater capital area. Yes, the Close greater, enough. Yes. It's exactly. where you land if you're flying in from right. other countries. Mm. Uh, I guess it's only appropriate. I mean, we talked about those musical specific spaces, opera specific spaces, yep. and it's about the sound system and everything to come together mm-hmm. for the optimal performance yes. experience. Now, this is, I suppose, geared towards more concerts, yeah. uh, vocalist reliant concerts. W- what kind of state-of-the-art <laughs> features comes with this arena that will elevate, apparently, the live K-pop experience? Well, the number one thing is the sound system, isn't Obviously. it? You know, yeah. um, This Inspire Arena, for example, is going to be equipped with state-of-the-art sound system provided by global audio manufacturer Mayer Sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will also have these massive monitors <laughs> that will ensure that Everybody uh, gets a good view of what is going on on the stage, yeah. uh, regardless of where they are seated. I mean, if you want to fit fifteen thousand people yeah. into the arena, I mean, there are nosebleed seats. Of course, you can't. Really Some people see. are going to be closer to the stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you have it: state-of-the-art sound system mm. and better massive monitors. For those of you wondering where K-pop artists have been holding their large-scale concerts until now, sports stadiums yes. is probably one of the most popular answers. Um, there are some concert venues, but mostly smaller ones. That's right. They're smaller in scale. So these larger concert venues uh, slash sports stadiums include (laughs) Kuchok Sky Dome, the KSPO Dome in Olympic Park, and the Chamshi Sports Complex, the main stadium there. Now, um, as these facilities were not originally intended (laughs) to hold concerts, they usually don't provide the best kind of environment for the singers and the fans in terms of acoustics. And overall, this degrades the quality of their shows. And, you know, uh, people who are extra sensitive to sound and audio have been known to complain over the years. The thing is, I'm not that sensitive. And I go to concerts, well, seldom. So Mm. therefore, any experience is good. Because Mm -hmm. if you go once every 10 years, it'll be great. Uh, But I must say, the Melomong's concert was a little bit puzzling for me. Because the way they seated us on the floor were with these plastic chairs. Uh And I thought, you couldn't think of a better way to see us. It just looks so weak, these plastic chairs. Oh, plastic chairs, but they did have like yeah. a, some sort of back support, right? They a weren't l- a stools. Bit, okay. I mean, but I mean, <laughs> really? <laughs> I see. I wonder why they went that route. Because they, they had this empty space and they didn't want uh-huh. us to stand and, and or, or crowds to form uh, closer to the stage. I see. So they had designated seating right. instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought, hmm. Not the most comfortable. No, nor the more most attractive. I mean, these are really yeah. expensive tickets. Right. So I thought, hmm, they couldn't think of a better Especially way. if they're expensive. Right? I yep. mean, um, I mean, it's because we were so deprived. Mm. Concert tickets were pricier. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> it's probably more about the sound system and a state-of-the-art tech, not seats. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, up until now, K-pop yeah. singers and their record labels, they don't, really didn't have that much choice, actually, that yeah. many options mm-hmm. uh, because of a lack of venue here in Seoul. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, that could have accommodated tens of thousands of spectators. Uh, and frankly speaking, the number of these sports stadiums are, are not enough to meet the demands. I mean, that's even, also true. Even at the Mel Mons concert, I was running around like a crazy person mm-hmm. because there was a GOD concert happening on the same grounds, just uh-huh. at a different venue within the Olympic Park. Right. It's really confusing. It is. It can be. There's just not enough space to hold all these K-pop concerts. Right. So uh, numerous K-pop industry insiders have been calling on yeah. the government to build more performance halls, okay. both large and small, especially at this time when K-pop and Korean culture are enjoying the peak of their popularity everywhere. Milk it, essentially. Yep, yep. Okay. With the current popularity of K-pop enjoying perhaps a heyday, never foreseen and never to be outdone, <laughs> the venues will contribute to attracting more international music fans to Korea. Yeah. I wonder, what are large-scale concert venues are being built over the next few years? So there's one called uh, CJ Live City Arena, okay. which is being built in Kuyang. Uh, that will be completed in 2024. That will offer up to 20,000 seats, uh, meaning that it will become the largest concert-specific arena in uh, Korea. Uh, the new arena is expected to hold more than 190 performances and events mm every year. And in 2025, the Seoul Metropolitan Government and Kakao uh, are going to open the Seoul Arena in Changdong Mm. in Dobunggu District. This is in northern Seoul. Mm. And uh, this arena holds uh, 18,000 audience members Mm -hmm. and will hold up to 90 performances every year. So there are collective efforts to build more venues. Mm. The prowess of K-pop. There have to be investments as well because building these venues can be very, very expensive. I wonder if... uh, Trying to host that Busan Expo in 2030 helps uh, make the well at least make these plans a little bit more solid. I mean, the hey, fact that's a good that point actually, because we want to attract so many yeah. tourists coming into the country, we should ideally mm-hmm. have more venues, not just in Busan City, but it seems in the capital yep. city as well. Mm. We'll leave it there for now as we turn our attention to our second <laughs> sort of related yep. buzzword. I mean, how much are you willing to pay for a Blackpink concert, <sighs> depending on how much money you have in the bank and how yeah. big of a fan you are? Apparently, it could amount to A fortune. Yeah, so fans uh, in mainland China, they're willing to pay really sky-high prices for tickets. And you have to remember, these people have been deprived of uh, large-scale events, not just concerts, but festivals and any kind of like large gatherings in the last three years amid the tight COVID-19 pandemic restrictions. And zero COVID policies in China was something else. Right. Right. (sighs) Right. So Blackpink is going to be performing three shows Mm. in Hong Kong uh, this month. And, uh, you know, they're drawing fans from mainland concert in droves. Uh, And this is a problem because there are a limited number of tickets. uh, Yeah. And a limited number of days of performance. So... And there are people who are who have already bought tickets and they're selling reselling them for crazy expensive prices. Okay, so let's look at the price. Yeah. Just how extravagant are these prices for Blackpink concert tickets? So resellers have been inflating ticket prices to as high as twenty five thousand Hong Kong dollars, which is more than four million mm-hmm. Korean won. Is having one on, uh, which is roughly three thousand one hundred U.S. dollars per ticket. Per ticket, we're oh, talking about. Wow. So on Alibaba's digital flea market, a search for Hong Kong Blackpink concert yielded more than 50 results. Uh, resellers are quoting prices twice the original cost. I guess twice is like the starting price at this point. <laughs> Many urged fans to snag tickets before prices rose even further. <sighs> uh, one seller wrote, quote, no need to quarantine after borders reopen on January 8th. If you don't buy now, the prices will only shoot up. I am down to the last two tickets. So dangling those tickets in front of their fans' faces. I've got to say, are these not professional sellers? The wording on that. I know, right? Pretty attractive. Like, you're running out of time. Exactly. So another seller was asking for 22,000 yuan, which is around 406 million won for a seat on the 13th row from the stage. Now, these VIP tickets originally sold at 490,000 won, Mm. uh, which includes access to the group's pre-show, rehearsal, and other benefits for the fans. Okay, uh, when is Blackpink's concert in Hong Kong? (laughs) Eventually, this would have to come to an end. Yeah, so they're going to be holding the Hong Kong stop of their Born Pink World Tour at the Asia World Expo from January 13th through the 15th, so that's next week. Okay. Uh, The show's sold out within two hours uh, after ticket sales opened in November. Eric, I didn't even know ticket sales opened in November. I'm just, I can't keep up. (laughs) These girls are really busy right now. They're touring
traveling the world, having the time of their lives. All right, there you have it, folks. Uh, let's move on to our final sure. buzzword of the day because I've seen so many headlines um, on this winter heat record smashing uh, the European continent. Yes. Um, you know, national records are breaking everywhere in Europe. Uh, it broke in eight countries. Uh, let me give you some examples and the numbers, actually. Mm-hmm. On Monday, Warsaw in Poland uh, recorded 18.9 degrees Celsius. Poland is cold. Bilbao in Spain was 25.1 degrees Celsius. This is like summer weather, Ugh. which is more than 10 degrees Celsius above average. We just want to point out that this is not just abnormal. It is peculiar. It is very peculiar. And it's a red flag we can't ignore. The, ne- the news of this unseasonably warm mm-hmm. European weather comes on, of course, the heels of severe storms in North America yes. that has left more than 60 dead mm-hmm. and the cyclones rage on. We're not just talking about Poland and Spain. Okay. We're talking about temperatures in the Netherlands, Lithuania, Latvia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Belarus. Now, all these are really cold countries in right. the wintertime. They've all broken national records. Records were also broken in Germany, France, and Ukraine. <sighs> yeah. You know, I mean, I'm seeing some headlines indicating that for meteorologists, mm-hmm. this is concerning. But for European consumers who are concerned about skyrocketing energy prices, uh, and it's an alleviation. Yes. That's like the tiny silver lining, but we can't ignore the fact that it's too warm for exactly. this time of the year. So in Switzerland, temperatures hit 20 degrees Celsius. And this is really bad for mm. the country because, well, this is where the Alps are. And uh, it's peak ski season right now. And uh, the warm weather has affected ski resorts all across the region, which have seen a shortage in snow. I mean, can you imagine the Alps spraying just fake snow? It just doesn't make sense to me. No. But that's that's the conditions they face. I mean, think about how many tourists they draw in because of the Alps. Yeah, before we end, uh, 2022 has been the hottest year on record in many parts of Europe, including the UK, Ireland, France, and Spain. Okay. Thank you very much, Erica. Pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.